Hello everyone and welcome to Spurred On's End of Season Awards Debate Battle. I've got to read that because that is a complicated title. <laughs> uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go through a number of different potential awards. Uh, then Emma and Craig are going to nominate who they think should win that award or what they think should win that award. <laughs> Give me a reason or two for each and then I will decide who the winner is. So the awards we're going for today are number one, Game of the Season. Number two, Most Improved Player. Number three, Flop of the Season. Number four, Moment of the Season. Number five, Gold of the Season. And Number six, player of the season. So we will kick it off with game of the season. Craig, I'm going to come to you first. What do you nominate? I'm going for Stoke away. Okay. Uh, we batted them 4-0. It was at the Britannia. It was, it was at a time where it was a Monday night football game. The pressure was on us. We were still in the hunt for the title. Yeah. Um, Leicester played, I think, two days before. So they would, it had time to settle in and think, flip, we really need to get a result here. Yeah. Stoke away is always tough. Yeah. And we went in there and just put in the most emphatic performance, I think, of the season. I think Deli Ali scored two. And yeah, Harry and he Kane. missed that. He also missed that. He also <laughs> missed and made he a joke about it. He, yeah. missed, he missed one, but he scored. Potter punched the ground. Yes. And then got embarrassed about his reaction. But I remember it clearly because I was in LA, sunning it up. Oh, Watching God. it at just, about 12 just o'clock. Just that Well, that's where I was. You know, I was there. I was in LA. And I was watching it just thinking, this is it. Like, we're really going to go for it now. Yeah. Like, no one expected us. I think after that game... I saw Arsenal fans on social media like really scared. They mm. were like, Tottenham look fantastic. And I just think that was the most complete game we've had. They Stoke never looked like at any point scoring. We was all over them. And yeah, I just thought we was going to go and press on from there. But Fair enough. I take your nomination on board. Uh, argument well made, except for the LA stuff. <laughs> Emma, what have you got for me? It's, you know, it's a worthy contender, but I think it is beaten by the Valentine's Day love of Manchester City away winning at the Etihad. Um, which really was, I think, the first time... That was my runner-up. ...that most people believed that actually we were in with a shout of winning the league and that this wasn't just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, the irony of saying this now, but the same old Spurs. I mean, we were in a this real battle and it was like... When Ericsson scored that winner, A, the goal itself was absolutely sensational. It was like proper, full-on, total football, sexy as anything... The other thing was the the feeling at full time mm. between the players and the fans when they came over, when Poch came over. I mean, these this mm. scenes have been replayed a lot and he was giving it all to the fans. It was such an emotional moment. It was that real kind of, not only have we gone and won at Manchester City, um, a place which obviously has got history for us because that's where we won to get into the Champions League the first time. Yeah, but crouchy. it was like, we are real contenders and we're all in this together. That's what and it was that really the, felt like. That Was that the game just after Arsenal had got a draw against yeah. Leicester? Yeah. So I mean, we, we knew the pressure. Concerning. Yeah, so we knew the pressure was on at that point as well. Arsenal, they beat Leicester. They beat Leicester. Beat Leicester, sorry. Yeah, so Welbeck, they got yeah. Welbeck had got his last minute winner. Yeah, and then they and took all those selfies in the changing rooms. Yeah, yeah. As, like as if they'd won the league. Yeah. And then uh, and then we went to City and we bettered it. We were just better. It was it was so wonderful to see them play like that and to see the connection that there was there and it was magic. It really was. This is extremely tough. I they are the top two basically, aren't they? Yeah, and then so. they are neck and neck. Uh, can I um, say something before you make a decision? Oh, Just to counter what, that that why I never chose that. God. It is a debate. <laughs> I just feel like it lost some gloss purely because a lot of teams have got results there this season. Leicester okay. got a result there, even better. I think it was three one. Liverpool's battered them. We beat them already earlier in the season, so it was like, well, we've beat them already four well, one. So I just feel like if it was like a very freak result, like, oh, they haven't lost there and it's been a thing, yeah. that is what, the only reason I didn't do it. I just felt like they've already lost yeah. there no, a couple of times. I understand that, but I'll come back with that to you and say that, well, Stoke lost three games 4-0 in the immediate aftermath of them playing us, so they mm. were losing to everybody. So you both picked Fair games enough. against easy teams. <laughs> Fair enough. And also, uh, I'll counter one more point with his LA-ness. I was actually at the game. I was at both those games. Just putting it out there. And also, I, also in the, also, how, also, how does that help? Also in the Stoke one, we had a clean sheet. I'm just saying that's always important. <laughs> yeah, I know. Poor Reese, pressure's okay, on. Okay, for this one, I am going to give the victory very, very narrowly to two one against Man City. Yes! And the reason is, I think it's really close. <laughs> that four 0 was such a complete performance that it yeah. did feel absolutely sensational. Yeah. Uh, the Man City one though was a bit more of a surprise. I expected us to get a result at Stoke at, yeah. in that, at that time. 
Uh, I wouldn't have in the last two weeks. <laughs> but uh, that City one, I really didn't, especially after it felt like it was all set up. Arsenal just won against Leicester. They were celebrating like they won the league. And then it was like, oh, God. And I remember texting my brother going, oh, shit. Yeah. And he said, it's fine. Our task is the same. Yeah. This actually could play into our hands a bit. And it did in the end. And yeah. we won. And there were just some amazing moments. That Larice save right at the end. Oh, um, yes. To go to all. Yeah. I mean, so, and there's also, like, there's plenty of honourable mentions as well. Like, you know, beating Man United 3 0 at home, yeah. beating West Ham 4 1, beating Man City 4 1. I mean, you know, there's yeah. been. And so the thing is, it's game, game of the season, not performance of the yes, season. Yes, it wasn't so. performance, it was just game and sort of what that yeah. result meant. So, uh, winner of game of the season is 2-1 to Spurs away at Man City. Next cool. award for most improved player, Emma. <coughs> <laughs> Everyone knows what I'm going to say, because I've banged on about him so much this season. Yeah. And every single time he's done well, I've been like, yes, Lamella Love. Lamella Love, Eric Lamella this season. He has improved a lot. Has moved on to a different level mm. from even where he was when he was getting better towards the end of last season. I mean, his all-round game has improved so much. We always knew that he had, like, all the tricks and flicks and all the rest of it. But the tenacity and the grit that he now has in there, I mean, in fairness, he takes it a bit too far. He's too fond of a yellow card. He likes a two-foot tackle. But do you know what? I'd rather see that than see someone who runs away from getting involved in those kind of confrontations. Yeah. Not to mention some of the goals that he set up. You know, we already talked about the Man City one. I mean, just... It, his ability to pick a pass um, has improved. His awareness of where everybody is on the pitch. I think he's developed a much better understanding of his our kind of like front four quartet. Yeah, thing and he's going someone on. who we were all worried about being a huge flop. That's Massively. the next award, though, uh, and had two tough seasons, and then has really, I mean, f confirmed his place in the starting eleven for totally. me. Totally, he's gone from being he's gone from being a player who a lot of people would have liked to have seen sold mm. to being one who's now. In the first eleven, okay. as it currently stands, it's good. It's a good case, good nomination. Craig, who do you nominate for most improved player? I gotta go for Danny Rose. Yeah, I gotta go one. for Danny Rose. Now, I I completely understand the Lamella one, and he has improved dramatically. But I'd make a case to say that he's just got back to where he was at Roma. He was this player. In fact, yeah. he was probably even better at Roma. He was scoring all kinds of goals. If you go back and look at them, he was he was fantastic. He was like a talent that everyone was talking about from Argentina. Came here. Just took a while to adapt, but mm -hmm. he's just got back to probably where he is and he's probably just going to get even better to where he needs to be. Whereas Danny Rose, since I've seen him, it's just been a consistent ascent, yeah. literally. And he was getting even better last season and we started to see him. We was like, well, Danny Rose is actually becoming someone now. And in this season, not only has he got his England call up, he looks bang on to go to the Euros. Yeah. And in my opinion, he's probably been the left back of the season. Yeah. That's I how improved agree. he's been. He's aggressive. We talk about Lamella's aggression and, and tenaciousness, but I mean, Danny Rose is right up there. Yeah. Doesn't pull out of any challenges, Puts doesn't shy away. Line. Yeah, it loves to get. And even the loves attacking threat, the attacking threat, the attacking threat he's offered. Yeah. He's been near enough a winger at times. I've also got to say, the field. one of the best chesters of a long ball I've ever seen yeah. in my life. His yeah, control is amazing. Then, yeah. I think Kyle yeah. Walker's has really improved in that as well. But Danny Rose, just every single time, just nails the it, perfect doesn't he? chest. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I would also like to say, just in favour of Lamella as well, is when we lose the ball, he is literally one of the first to be going yeah, and getting he is it there back. Getting it back. Which is so mm -hmm. important for us when we spend so much time pressing, like we want to spend as, spend as much time with the ball as possible. He is, he'll, you know, he'll run after like four or five players trying to get it back. You know, I've got to say, it's this impressive. is another really tough one. And when I heard the nominations, I thought it was going to be an easy win for Lamella. But Craig has made a compelling argument. Lamella has improved a lot. But I'm going to give it to Craig for Danny Rose because uh, my only argument against uh, Danny Rose is going to be that, like, I oh, thought he was good last year. But you're right, he has got a lot better. Whereas mm -hmm. Lamella was a lot better sort of three years ago, then yeah. spent two years being worse, and he's now got back to that. I think that was a good point. Yeah. So uh, although Lamella has improved dramatically for Spurs, I'm going to go with Danny Rose, who has improved dramatically in general, uh, going forward, at the back, yeah. with his passion, everything. So most improved player, Danny Rose. Next one, flop of the season. Emma, I'll come to you first. <laughs> Actually, no, I went to you first last time. You did go to Craig. <laughs> I went to Craig first. Flop of the season. I wouldn't be surprised if we're kind of unanimous in, in this selection, but I'm, I'm going for Ryan Mason. And it's just, it's, it hurts because last season he was decent. We finished fifth. We were yeah. getting a lot of goals, but he was good. He did a performance. He was part of those kind of new players that Poch put faith in, the youngsters. We were really excited were, about Mason yeah, and Bentaleb last year. Very, very, a lot of high energy that Ryan Mason was providing, running around a lot. Even had a decent pass on him, could pick out a ball. 
But this season, I mean, obviously he's been injured for a lot of the season, but mm. the games where he's had to come in and do a job, he's been absolutely awful. Now, there's been arguments like, oh, the, the fans are getting on his back and he hasn't been able to deal with it. And every time he, you know, misplaces a pass or something, there's grunts and groans. They're not doing that for no reason, though. But that's this is the thing. And I mean, the proof is in the pudding. We've seen the stats with Musa Dembele. Yeah. You know, out of the six games we've lost, five has come when Dembele hasn't played. And I think Ryan Mason has been, maybe apart from one where Carroll's played, has been the person that stepped in yeah. and he's just not been good enough. He's you know literally... I've got to say, I'm a bit surprised that Dembele didn't come up in Most Improved Player. But, uh, uh... OK, we've heard Ryan Mason. Let's uh, hear what your nomination is for I... Flop of the Season, Emma. <laughs> well, um, I could have, after Sunday, I could just quite frankly have given it to all of them. Right. <laughs> Um, but no, I feel in a very rare moment, it's not been many times happened this season, but I agree with Craig. Mm. Um, and, wow. it, and it is really sad. United. United. In, in disappointment in Ryan Mason. Yeah, and it, yeah. Is, it is really sad. It's with a heavy heart that I say it because mm. he was great last season and I do, you know, I do feel for him because he's gone from being first choice to being bit part player off the bench sometimes if he's lucky and yeah. then when he comes on... I mean, we said last week when we talked about the build-up to the Newcastle game that, you know, we would see whether Mason would have what it takes to be an able yeah, deputy God. to Dembele. And, um, what did we see? Oh, my God. I think it's fair to say that he completely failed that test. Um, I I can't see... If we, if we want to be challenging for the title again next season, um, and obviously with the Champions League that we're now going to be playing in as well... I can't see that he is adequate enough cover for if anything happens yeah. to Dyer or Dembele. Um, I think we need to go up a level. And unfortunately, as I said, as another one who's been a Spurs boy, come all the way through, you know, been best mates with Harry Kane for so long, it is a heavy heart to say it, but I, I think he might be sold this summer. Yeah, well, he does feel like a squad player now and you don't want to have anyone that feels like that. You want to have everyone competing like they're all good enough and putting a challenge in. Uh, yes, what I would say is that it's interesting that sort of Last year, last summer, we were talking about like, yeah, Mason and Ben Taleb. I made a famous comment about Dembele selling Dembele, uh, which people <laughs> tweet me every single day, every second of every day. Uh, and I say, I'm a comedian. It was a joke. Um, but uh, we were so excited. And then to now that to be our position where we've got no depth mm. as well as striker, centre yeah. mid. We'd have like, we would have thought, oh, we've got four absolutely quality ones now. But no, it's still two. Somehow it always remains two. So congratulations, both of you. The winner of that is Ryan Mason. Flop of the season. Well done to both wow. of you. Next one is moment of the season. <coughs> Emma. What's your moment of the season? Oh, I mean, there's been so many. It's been a ridiculous amount, to be honest. But I had to go for uh, December 28th, Vicarage Road, 89th minute. Sun flicks one backwards through Jorelio Gomez's legs and the place just goes mental. The 2,000-odd Spurs fans that we had in that end just yeah. absolutely lost their shit, all of yeah. us. And not only did we lose our shit, the players did as well. Jumped into the crowd. Like, it's provided... That's where that infamous photo was. I was, was. going to say probably the most iconic photo of our season. Probably the most common Twitter banner among absolutely. Spurs fans, isn't it? Um, and it, it, you know, I talk about magic moments, but I mean, oh, my God. It's, it was the moment where, because, you, you know... Watford had been playing really well at home. Um, it was a tough place to go. We yeah. didn't really know what we were going to get going to get out of it. Um, and especially, like, we'd had a really good Christmas period and you go, there's got to be a bad result coming in Christmas period. It's got to be. And you just think, oh, maybe it's Watford. Ugh. And, you know, and it looked like that's the way that it was heading. Yeah. You're thinking, oh, it's a draw. And then you kind of go, oh, maybe it's not a bad point. Ugh. Kieran Trippier. And then... Gets a cross in. Oh, my in God. Song, offside. <laughs> knocks it through the... Gomez's legs after Gomez had been slagging us off. And that was, that was to be fair. That was a big moment. In context now, it uh, doesn't seem as big. No. But it was back when Watford were good. It was back when Watford so, were good. And it's back when we were good. And, yeah. Um, <laughs> it, and just, you know, just the whole thing, like, you know, notoriously we sometimes suffer quite a lot over the Christmas period. It's where we can get a bit of a dip. Yeah. And that kind of rounded it off. I think we went unbeaten through the Christmas period. And um, it was, I think we had three wins out of three, in actual fact, if I remember. And that good was... Moment. That really kick-started our, and again, it's weird to say this now post-season, but our title charge. Mm. Um, because we were in so much form and so much momentum going forward after that, it was really on. Fair enough. Craig, what are you going for? What's your nomination? All right, so just to, uh, you know, Carl, that I, I thought about that as well. It was a big moment at the time, but I think, like you said, in retrospect, it didn't really, doesn't really mean anything, that moment. Okay. Also, I feel like it's a last-minute goal. That could be against anyone. When you grab that last-minute winner right at the death... But yeah. last minute, that's why last-minute winners are so great. Yeah, they are, but I feel like... <laughs> it was I feel like every, every team 
that's grabbed a last minute winner will feel like that. that. That's a normal emotion when you're grabbing a last minute. For me, I feel like the moment of the season is away, Selhurst Park, when Deli Ali scored that wonder goal. Yeah. I remember being there and just the level of audacity when it went in, yeah. the away fans lost it. Yeah. And I afterwards, I did the fan cams for Spurred it. On. And the feeling was just crazy. Like people, because we lost at Selhurst Park last season. Also, they went 1-0 up. Yeah. Jan Vertonghen picked up that heavy injury. And I was just looking at it like Vimmer stepping on. We don't know what Vimmer's really capable of in a game like this. What's going to happen? It's 1-1. Are we going to get this goal? Yeah. Are they just going to nick the goal? Dele Alli does that. Then Chali does another little great... It was a great goal. Yeah, yeah. Great goal. It just couldn't, totally it, it just, it just couldn't live up to it. But just that moment there, when Dele Alli stuck it away, I remember being in the Crystal Palace end yeah. and just losing my nut. And I was specifically told to be quiet. But you couldn't. Because when that goal went in, I saw Crystal Palace fans applauding. Yeah. Like, it was ridiculous. But for me, that was the moment. And it's the way the fans acted after the game Interesting that was... you've both picked goals as your moment of the season when the next award is goal of the season. But, yeah. uh, OK, I'm going to weigh this up. I think <coughs> I have to give it to Deli Alley for, I mean, just a moment of absolute class. It was sensational. The Watford one, obviously, was huge as well. That was another, actually, very skillful goal. Uh, but the Deli Alley one, it was just... No one could believe it. It's My jaw was on the floor. I went yeah. nuts. I, I went mean... nuts at the other one as well, but that was just like... For a different reason. No, in fairness, I mean, I was at work at the the day of the Palace game, and you know, it, journalists can be notoriously cynical bunch. Um, and I was in at Sky, and obviously we get all the match feeds in, so we were mm. seeing it live. When Deli Ali scored that, the whole place did grind to a halt. You just yeah. heard everybody go, "Oh, yeah," <laughs> because nobody, nobody could have predicted that was going to no, happen. Exactly. It's a fair point. And it sort of sums up a season that he's had, doesn't it? Yeah, and, and the thing is, it wasn't even just a terrific solo goal. It was the way Harry Kane crosses yeah, it. Amazing. Yeah, Erickson, amazing. Erickson amazing with the cushioned yeah. header yeah. just laid it up for him to do it. It was all, it just generally, it was amazing. Yeah, fair enough. Also, it did have the same sort of, it wasn't, it wasn't as late in the game as Hingman Son's one, but it did have the same thing of, we, you know, we needed uh, to we, get a winner. Mm -hmm. And that was it. And then it was just sort of like after that, they seemed shell-shocked and we... Uh... Yeah, back in the days when we seemed to have character. <laughs> exactly. Uh, next award is Goal of the Season. I wonder hey. if anything that we've just said is going to come up again. Uh, who did we go for first last time? Oh, who cares? Craig, go, go for it. I don't know what it's going to be. Yeah, do. Same one. Same goal of the season. Although I will say, if that goal didn't exist, then I think it would quite easily be Harry Kane's one against Arsenal yeah, okay. where he's knocked it in. That was a ridiculous goal. But it just shows you the level of that Deli Ali goal. Did they actually, have they done goal of the season Yeah, yet? he won it. Oh, he did win it? Yeah. Well, there you go. It's not even for Spurs, that's just yeah. life. Well, <laughs> just life. So who are you going for? Same one or are you going for the Harry Kane one? Well, well... Do you want to win the debate? Or do yeah, you it's like, yeah. what do I actually want to do? No, look, here's the deal, right? Uh, if you're going to give Deli Ali moment of the season, brilliant. Might as well give Harry Kane goal of the <laughs> Might season. Might as well give Harry Kane goal of the that season. That's what I'm thinking. Against Arsenal, I mean, this is the, th the thing. Obviously, Deli Ali's goal, in terms of technical ability and everything, was just out of this world. We know how brilliant it was. But when it comes to the importance of a goal, when it comes to the stage on which you score a goal and yeah. the way in which you do it, to do what he did to go 2-1 up against Arsenal, the whole 10 minutes that we were top of the league, yeah. was, I mean... I Wait, is that I've your decision, never, Harry Kane? I'm going Harry Kane. Yeah, you, I've over, never... That's not even well, the league. Never well, heard. the only thing... I've you can't do it because heard. the moment hang is... On, the, you can't do on. that. You just have to go by what the topic however, is. I've however, I've never heard yeah. ever... White Hart Lane, as loud Thank as it you. was That's when was that goal for. went in. I've never heard it go that loud. It, it might was... have been if no. the Deli Alley goal was at White Hart no, Lane. No, I've of never, just... it didn't, ever. didn't quite mean as much. It wasn't it just about the quality of the goal. Arsenal, Which, by the was... way, that oh. Harry Kane finish was as shocking the way was, he finished that yeah. as the Deli Alley one. No, in terms, I yeah. disagree. In terms of skill, it wasn't quite as good. No. But it wasn't was quite as good. It was nowhere near. What are we serious right now? It was right still now? like, holy shit. That the trajectory on it was amazing. Yeah, Plus yeah, he yeah. ripped he off the mask. He ran oh, off. I mean, but that's, what, that's more of a moment. You're talk, see, this is where okay, it's getting so blurred now. You're, we're talking about a goal. Just the, the sheer ability of a goal. You know what? That should have been that should have been your nomination for mine. That should have been my main goal. Yeah, because of what you said before about the hurricane cross, the cushion header from Ericsson, and then that finish with it being off the ground for so long, I do have to give goal of the season on ability to Deli Alley. It's the goal of it's, it's it the goal. It might even be the goal across all leagues. It across is the goal of the season. That Harry I would have to one. go and watch yeah. all the leagues and try and find a better goal. That Harry Kane one is close and if that had been a winner, then it would have been if extremely been a winner, it would have close. Been. I mean, that's more of a moment. If it had been a yeah. winner, it would have been. But in the moment, in the moment, that was amazing. Uh, well, that brings us on to our final award, which is player of the season. Now, we've already had a debate 
quite similar to this. <laughs> mm. And uh, I think Craig knows who I went for in that debate, and that is why he's written on his card for what he has. Uh, so, Emma, I'll come to you first. <laughs> um, it's really hard, actually, um, if I take the last month out of, out of the equation. Um, but there are a lot of contenders, I think. Like, you know, we've got the likes, obviously, of Harry Kane, we talk about him all the time. Uh, Moussa Dembele, I mean, Eric Dyer in the centre of defensive mid, total revelation. Mm -hmm. um, but personally, I have to give it to the man who I think has improved our side collectively more than anybody else <clears> this <throat> season, and that is Toby Alderweireld. Yeah, understood. Um, I think he's the signing of the season. Uh, again, if you certainly take the last two matches away, um, or the last three matches away potentially, um, I think he literally barely put a foot wrong. Yeah. I think he made one mistake against Stoke um, up until we got into the last fiasco of the last three games. Um, and... His his presence, his partnership with Vertonghen, and then even his partnership with Vimmer when Vimmer then came in. I remember when, when Vertonghen got injured, we were all like, oh my God, thank God it wasn't Toby, which is no reflection on Jan, who's a great defender, but Toby's become that intrinsic to our side so quickly. I mean, his first season, and it feels like he's been playing for us forever. Yeah. Um, I feel like, especially when you look at, you know, last season when we finished fifth, we scored, you know, almost as many goals as what we did now, but we conceded a lot more. Mm -hmm. Whereas this season, you look at our back four, like he's probably the second or third name on the team sheet. And our, you know, number of clean sheets, the lack of goals that we've conceded, again, let's just forget about the last two matches, um, I think is testament to him. So I believe that for the fact that he's just seamlessly become a Tottenham legend in the space of one season, it should be Toby. Fair enough. Point well made. And he has great hair. Don't forget about the hair. Great. Always important. <laughs> um, I have to go with Harry Kane. Now, if you asked me two or three weeks ago who it would have been, yeah. I probably would have went with Toby Alderweireld. Exactly. But the mistakes he made against Chelsea... I think all, he was were, at fault for, for were almost, goals were against almost, Were almost criminal. And then to let him five goals... And I know it's the team effort. They were all shocking, but... I think it's harsh to put all five goals on him. No, it's not on him. It's on, it's on the team. But he's in the, de the defence and, you know... They take the brunt of it along with yeah. the you know goalkeeper, which it's in fairness. I mean, Hugo Lloris was poor, but anyway, if this was four or five weeks ago, I would have given it to Toby Alderweireld. But now, looking at it in retrospect and in hindsight, it has to be Harry Kane. He's won the Golden Boot. He's done his job as an individual. Yeah, he probably set himself a target. I don't know if Golden Boot was the target, but it was probably between twenty and twenty-five goals, and I think he's completely blown his target out of the water. And the fact that we're not top of the league or not even second, is not down to his goal scoring. Yeah. You have to look the other way to find out why we are not where we are. And it's because we've let in too many goals in the last three, four but games. You, what about the fact Kane didn't really <coughs> score in those games? What games? The last few. The fact he didn't, he didn't lay it off yeah, yeah, he did it. He, he went for the shot. Yeah, yeah, he didn't. He didn't. But in the same breath, like I said, he's done his job. If we look at the season, he's done his job. Now, if we actually stayed with the best defence in the season, even then I probably could have given it to Toby Alderweireld. But we're not the best defence in the season anymore. Do we definitely know that? No, we're not. Man United have got the best defence. Right, okay. But only just. Because we let him five goals in one yeah, game. But that, only yeah, just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, Harry Kane's done his job. Like I said, he's, he's, probably, what, he's probably the first name on the England team sheet this season. I don't know if I can say the same for Toby Alderweireld with Belgium. They've got right, Vincent thank company. God you said that. No, no, I was going to say nowhere <laughs> no, near the yeah, yeah, No, 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 with Belgium, and this is what I'm saying. This is a, this shows the level of how important Harry Kane is. And like I said, he's 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 done his job. Okay. I don't know if Tony Real has done his job on the same level as Harry the Kane. The only thing I would really just like to counter and come back and say is like I know that we are all still feeling really bad after what's happened at the weekend and how everything has panned out for us at the end mm. of the season. But I do think it is really, really important to not let what happened in the last three games of the season or four games of the season overshadow the great But it's about how you finish. Toby made a huge change. It's about how you finish. It's a marathon. So you could run great for the first, I don't know, three quarters of a race, but then if you just die off and people run past it means nothing. But you can't put that, I mean, that is a whole team collective. You can't just put that on Toby's head and that's why I think it's No, no, it's not, but that's who we're that's who we're talking about right now. Who was better in their individual position? I've heard your arguments and I'm making my decision. Uh, I think you both make good points. Toby definitely has improved the whole squad massively and mm. defence was the big thing we needed to improve. But the pressure on Harry Kane's shoulders, one season wonder coming from all angles. Mm. And then he has a tough first few games as well. Yeah. And then he scores all those goals. And he has the passion we were talking about earlier. And he has the desire. Not that Toby doesn't, he just doesn't show it quite as much. Although after games when he loses, he does drop around swinging his arms. I am going to 
Really, it's a personal thing because I said Harry Kane in the debate a few weeks ago and lost. So in the interest of revenge, <laughs> on a personal level, I'm giving it to Harry Kane, who should have won the debate previously. I made loads of great points, uh, even though Toby has been equally as good and equally as important. Uh, so, Craig, I believe that means you do win the debate. You'd oh, won it. Yes. You'd won it anyway. Uh, player of the season, I'm going for Harry Kane. It's very close. There's a few in the running. Uh, so those are our awards. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Who should have won? Game of the season, most improved player, flop of the season, moment of the season, goal of the season, and player of the season. Uh, let us know, especially if there's any when we didn't even nominate uh, what your thoughts are. Make sure to like the video, uh, subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you soon. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the most difficult spurverts of the season.